What's up everybody, I'm Jesse, this is my garage, and today we have to deal with an issue on the 300ZX that honestly shouldn't have ever been an issue. And I'm gonna show you guys how you're gonna change the accessory belts on your Nissan 300ZX starting right now. All right, everybody always says this engine bay is so cramped and you can't get to anything, but we're actually gonna change our accessory belts that look buried worse than they are is actually gonna be pretty easy. We're not gonna have to take off too much. We're gonna remove this, just gonna make our life easier than trying to fight it, our uh, intake tube on the passenger side. And then we'll have to go underneath the car, which I've got on some GK Tech Low Life ramps. And that's how we'll get to the AC belt. So we're gonna replace the power steering, the alternator, and the AC accessory belts on our Nissan 300ZX. And uh, not have them disintegrate like that power steering pump one did. I should have done this a while ago. And honestly, if you're thinking about replacing your accessory belts, you probably need to replace your timing belt and do either the 60K or the 120K service. Because honestly, these belts shouldn't just go out before 60K or 120K miles. Honestly, 60K miles, because that's the interval. Um, and anytime you do that, you should replace these belts because you have everything opened up. The reason I didn't replace these belts when I did the 120K service last October, last November on this car was they were on back order and I had everything buttoned up and I just threw the old ones on. Knowing how bad they were, let me show you how bad this one was. Terrible. And obviously we had the other ones and I was going to replace these and I just had, didn't get to it and then one broke on me. So we're gonna do all three of them today. But like I said, if you just bought a 300ZX and you're gonna do some maintenance on it and replace these belts, uh, you probably need to get a new timing belt too. So just one thing to think about. But other than that, let's get to it. Let's replace these belts. First, we have to take it off, obviously our power steering belt, which is the top one here is already off here's our power steering it's located under our cooling hoses it's the front on our dampener up front our harmonic balancer the next one is the ac which we're gonna have to go underneath to get to that and then last is the alternator we don't want the alternator belt to shred itself we need that and uh, let me tell you right now driving without power steering sucks so you need that too and ac too let's go all right well if you need to take off your power steering pump belt and your alternator belt. We're gonna work on our passenger side of our motor. Like I said, we're gonna get this out of our way so we're not fighting it. We have an eight millimeter on the clamp here. We've got a vacuum line here and a small little vacuum line right here that we can probably just pop right off. And then I'm gonna just tuck that right in there by the throttle body so we know where it's at. This is a good chance since we're doing maintenance probably just to replace this line. I replaced this one when we did the 120K service. If uh, these are original, they're probably cracked, brittle, and it's time to replace them. Next, we just need to pop this spring clamp off, grab our pliers. All right, now we got that spring clamp. We'll try to pull it off and a little, just use a screwdriver to help get even pressure. Boom, that's out of the way. Let go of that and this guy should wiggle right off and he'll just hang out right there. Next, we need to obviously undo this clamp here. And loosen our clamp down here. All right, and now let's just pull this off. Oh, baby. Boom, and that is off. When you do put this back, you wanna be careful not to fold any of these lips up. I'm gonna set that right there. So now we've got plenty of space to work on our accessory belts. All right, so the first bolt we need to loosen on our power steering is this, this bolt right, this nut right here. And that'll let our power steering pump slide up and down to adjust the tension and that'll let us the belt come off and let's put the new one on that's a 12 millimeter and just loosen that up but once we loosen that up 
We can loosen this guy and we can just put our hand down there like this and I've got everything loosened so just do that and then our power steering pump. All right, well after we've got the slide bolt taken out, we need to loosen the top locking bolt so the pump will will move freely and we won't have to fight anything. It's a 14 millimeter. You'll have to go through the pulley itself and there's holes in it where you can get to the bolts that you need to behind that. I've just got a 3.8 socket or yeah, 3.8 ratchet with a 14 millimeter socket on there and we're gonna loosen this just a little bit. And that's plenty loose. The pump slides up and down on that slide and you can get more slack by just adjusting this bottom bolt out. It'll let it slide further and you can take off your power steering pulley or power steering belt. You can take off your power steering belt and then we'll be able to slide the new one right back on. Now that that's out of the way, let's do the AC. All right, next thing we have to do, as you can see, I don't have my lift up in the new garage yet, is we have to get underneath the car. So nothing had to jack it up or anything crazy. Just use these little GK Tech ramps. Drove it up there. We need to get the AC off. And to do that, those bolts and nuts that we need to loosen are underneath the car. So let's go. All right, so underneath the car, what we're really looking for is uh, this is the driver's side we're going underneath and looking for the sway bar and right behind that is this guy right there there's our ac and that bolt which is a 12 millimeter bolt needs to be backed out and that moves the pulley the idler pulley which is right there that goes on the ac belt up and down allows it to slide same as the power steering and we can get that out and this is super easy we just need an extension going for that bolt right there as you can see already back this one out um, then our ac belt is off So the AC belt is like actually way easier than you think it is. I was like, oh man, where's it at? Underneath, super easy, easier than the power steering. The power steering is pretty easy. So these belts are actually pretty easy to change. Um, 300ZX, not that hard to work on, but as you can see, this belt's destroyed too. Last but not least is our alternator, which is extremely important. Keeps the power going and uh, our car running so let's take that one off next all right so now for the alternator we're going to go over to the passenger side and we're going to go ahead and get back underneath the car because for one it's up and two it's super easy to get to the bolts oops now we need to get to so a ratchet wrench comes in really handy as you can see there's the slide there's our alternator and then we've got the slide bolt for the alternator there and the nut is on the other side of it which is right where our 12 millimeter wrench is Go ahead and loosen that up, just a couple, get it loose, just like that. I'm gonna try and leave this here. Let's go to the top side, cause it's just easier to get to from the top side since we don't have to be laying on the ground. My socket and wrench attached to the bolt that we need, the slide bolt for the alternator. We are going to go ahead, oh my gosh, uh, loosen that. There really shouldn't be any tension on this because we loosened it up, but sometimes it just needs a little persuasion. You should be able to, once you kind of get a loose, spin it with your finger. That's how we've been able to do the other two. This one um, lives on the bottom, so it gets gone. If your power steering pump is leaking, your alternator will be covered. And power steering fluid, this J hose right here, you can see Z1. Uh, super overlooked leaks on like every older Z car I've seen that doesn't have it replaced. So you probably need to replace that hose. You'll know because your alternator will be soaked and gunk. But I got this loose. Let's go ahead and get this belt off. All right. After we have the slide bolt all loosened, we are going to need a 17 millimeter to undo the locking bolt. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. On top, same as the power steering. 
Now, I can't really see it from here, but it's on top of the alt. So it's on top of the alternator. The bolt on top of the alternator. I'm definitely gonna have to add a picture into this. But it's right, see my hand? This is the bolt for the power steering that we loosened on the slide bolt. It's underneath that right here on the alternator and it's a size 17 and you can get to it from up top. I need to loosen mine a little bit more. Or you know what, no I don't. I already have the belt off. Now that the belt's off, this drives the water pump too. Uh, we're gonna to try and just leave the clutch fan on. And slide it around this fan. Cause sure we can cut it, but we have to get the other one on. But if we just slide it around these blades, as we spin this around, no problem, no problem, no problem. Boom, there's our alternator and water pump, the most important belt. There we go, they're all off. All right, before you're like, Jesse, what are those belts you're using? What size is it, blah, 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 all that stuff. Let me tell you a little something about my engine and the belts that we're using first. We can see down there, it's all shiny. The harmonic balancer and it's a solid aluminum piece. It's an underdrive pulley that was on this motor, was on this car when I bought it. So that means the belts are a little bit of different size. So all I did was look on our belt right here and PK4 or PK990 right there, Bando. And I just ordered these exact replacement ones because obviously if we just go with the OEM ones, we're gonna to need to know exactly the size and to order that. So I figured it would just be easier to order these ones. This one's PK925. That one was for the AC. So we got our AC power steering and this one's gonna be for the water pump and alternator. And so that's why I'm using these. Yours very well could be different depending on the harmonic balancer that you have. I'd say most people probably have the OEM one. The OEM ones do tend to get damaged and people you know, always want to replace parts or they just want to replace parts. Um, I'm gonna throw these aftermarket ones on there because they're cheaper than buying a new OEM one. Like this guy here, this one's actually in pretty good shape to tell you the truth. But uh, that's why I'm using those so make sure you know what fits your vehicle before you order the wrong ones. You don't want it to be too long or too short and you won't be able to do it. Uh, this isn't a long service, but it, what makes it long is when you don't have the right parts and God forbid this is your only vehicle, you bought the wrong belt and then either you gotta put the old belt back on or I guess you're walking back to the parts store. Let's get these on. We're gonna go the same way we came off. We're gonna start with alternator and water pump. We'll get that ran over the clutch fan put back on there we'll tighten that up we'll do the ac power steering let's go all right so we're gonna just wrap this feed it right around this clutch fan here one blade at a time pretty easy oh this slide itself right oh there we go all right, after you have it on, just check, make sure everything is in place. You are in the correct spot on the harmonic balancer. You're going around your water pump and around your alternator. I shouldn't have to tell you this, but make sure the grooves are on the inside. Smooth side goes out. And then you can also just take your hand and spin it around a couple times. Make sure everything looks good. All right, well now that we have our water pump and alternator belt back in place, we're gonna do the same thing to tighten it. We're gonna start with the slide bolt, do it clockwise to tighten it. That will pull everything forward. We'll get it tight. You want, like they say, I think like a quarter inch of slack up and down on the line or on the belt when you tighten it. You definitely don't want it over tight. And if you don't tighten it enough, it'll slip and squill. So I'm gonna go slow, check all of our work. That's why we made sure all the grooves were lining up spun the belt around a few times, make sure it was on the right pulleys and facing, of course, the right direction. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and get it tightened up. We don't wanna rush this because then you're gonna to have to go back and fix something that you might have missed or not tighten the belt enough. So let's go ahead and tighten it. Start with the slide pulley, 12 millimeter. Get that tight in the spot we want. Then we'll tighten the bolt on the back of the alternator slide pulley. That clamps it down. And then we'll do the 17 millimeter on the top of the alternator last. And that'll lock everything into place. Same way we took it off, if you made it this far, we'll do the opposite and put it back on. All right, next we're gonna do the AC belt. And what we wanna do is kind of slide it into place. Probably gonna go from the top first. We wanna get it on the AC compressor and on our harmonic balancer. Um, then once we have those two in place, we can slide underneath the car, pull the belt down and slip it on the idler pulley for the AC. Let's go down there and check that out. All right, now we've got the AC belt on. We're gonna do last but not least, that's the power steering, one that started it all. So this one's the easy one. We're just gonna slip it on our power steering, run it over our harmonic balancer there, and then tighten our slide bolt. All right, now that we have the power steering one back on, we tighten the sliding bolt on the bolt that holds that. And then if we can't, if you can remember, turn your uh, pulley wheel so you can get to the bolt that holds the power steering pump in place if you can't you can get to it right here you see my wrench kind of come in from the back side here and you can just uh, tighten it that way boom you can slide your wrench right in there and tighten and you could even loosen it that way too but don't forget to tighten that up uh, the same on the alternator, except the alternator has a nut on the back, which is and all this wiring, all that stuff. So either loosen it or don't loosen it, but just make sure you get everything tightened back up. That's it for our belts. Our belts are installed. They're back in place. We got all new belts. Let's pull this out of there. We're going to go ahead, slide our into back in place. When you put this back in place, I see a lot of times where this lip right here, and you can see this one was like it when I pulled it all apart originally when I first got the car, but it gets folded up on this right here. So we don't want that to happen because then you'll have a vacuum link right there. Same on the bottom. I want to make sure these lips go back into place, and especially the bottom part of the lip. There's no trick to it. Just uh, check, take your time, be patient, and make sure you put it on there right. But let's get that back installed like uh one two and just like that it's back on i guess the trick to get these back on to not fold that bottom lid is start with the bottom when you put it on put the bottom on first and then slide the top back on and start down here slide that one in slide the bottom in slide the top on then come up here do the same thing don't forget your hoses to reconnect your vacuum line one there one there, put that clamp back on. There you go, eight millimeters on mine to tighten these clamps down, and we're all good. I'm gonna slide that clamp back into place. We'll start this up, and we'll see if we did it right. Pretty sure we did. Everything looks good. We got a little sound, but we can see what that is really quickly. Uh, you can see that a little piece of tape is coming loose on that wiring harness, which we actually need to relocate. We'll do that soon. But I'm going to trim that up, and uh, everything else is good. No squeaks. It's not too tight. We didn't break the belt, so we did it just perfect. Sounds freaking amazing. This car sounds so good. For just being like a 30 year old car. Uh oh, Chloe's awake. That means we gotta wrap this up. I'll send that piece of tape up. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna learn more about how to maintain your 300ZX or watch me build this, 
because if you see right over there we have some engines on some turbos and some turbos over there so things are happening in the garage make sure to hit that subscribe button check out shop j garage if you want to support the garage buy a cool 306 t-shirt and uh i'll talk to you next time